totally right and justified in what he's doing, mm -hmm. then why does he not repent and be forgiven? Surely he is intelligent enough to realize he is fighting a battle he cannot win, and also super intelligent enough to realize that the famous quote by Milton, quote, mm -hmm. it is better to rule in hell than to serve in heaven, end quote, is utter baloney. Even mm -hmm. if he believes he is totally right and God is totally wrong, God clearly holds all the cards. What is to be gained from continuing a fight against all odds? This useless war would be over in seconds if he'd just get a clue, and the resultant joy in the universe would know no bounds. No one, even he, is beyond redemption, beyond repentance, beyond mm -hmm. forgiveness. That's not the grand scheme of things. God needs an opposer. God needs it, or he would have never existed to begin with. It is almost like we could take this back to Adam and Eve. Why was the serpent allowed? Why was he allowed, period? I've always wondered. And the, the answer to that question is, is simple. He was allowed to do that because even in God's makeup of what he is, in his existence, in his essence, I find him to be more than just jealous now, but susceptible to boredom, susceptible to, well, if there's nothing for me to do here, then why carry on here? So what greater way to spice up the Cajun food, if you will, than to put a lot of pepper on the ground? Mr. Bell, Satan doesn't want repentance. He wants vengeance. Vengeance. So it, it, would, it would be almost like, and, and I, I, want, I want to use this term loosely now because I'm such a big fan of it. It would almost be like um, Eastern Michigan playing at Nebraska next Saturday morning. There is no way, no way at all that they could go in there and win that ball game. But what they can do <laughs> is inflict enough damage on that team or, or that opposition mm -hmm. in order to effect what's coming down the road. Satan sees this opportunity, and he has seized this opportunity to damage God. And the way he's going to do that and the way we are going to do that by running with the devil, if you will, is by causing complete chaos, chaos. and damaging the foundation of what God has built. Now, you keep coming back to chaos. Oh, yes. All right. Uh, this is from Anne mm -hmm. in Middleton, California. Nice place. <laughs> Art, um, your guest is not a product of Satan, but a product of the evils of the Catholic Church. Ironically, <laughs> now let me finish. Ironically, the master she worships is an invention of the Catholic Church. We true witches know there is no such thing as Satan. True <laughs> witches fear this kind of talk. The memory of six to nine million dead during the Inquisition and the witch burnings is all too fresh. Humanity needs a break from hysterical Catholic fear-mongering. Whose side is Patsy really on? Mr. Bell, I would welcome them to come here with their torches and strings to hang me up and burn me alive. See, that's what I told you on the phone when you called me that afternoon. Lack, cur lack of courage, lack of of responsibility and lack of accepting the father of all supernatural power relating to the evil side. I would welcome to be strung up. I welcome them to march up here, string me up and burn me. I would welcome it because the essence of my spirit would be more powerful than I do believe in reincarnation. It does exist. I know I've lived before. And, I know and, I have. and will again? And will again. And I will just go to another time to inflict more evil damage on another people in another time frame. And I welcome it. It's like an enemy, which I wanted to get to, an enemy of mine. Art, I don't care. I have no mercy, and I do not want mercy on myself. I do not receive mercy because I do not have mercy. When I have an enemy, I want that enemy to go down and I don't care how I have to do it if I have to resort to licking a dog I will 
if I have to resort attacking them, which I want to bring up later on about soul journey and different things, oh, you bet evil people can soul journey. I have many times went in a state of sleep in different things and have left marks on my enemies. And I see fulfillment in destroying them. I don't care if it takes me 40 years and I, if I'm in a wheelchair, I will find them and I will see their destruction if it's the last thing I do in my own eternity. All right, let's go to the phones. Um, first time caller line, you're on the air with Harley. Good evening. Hello there. How are you, sir? Fine. Where are you? I am in Salt Lake City, Utah. Well, no, that's uh, that's you. I'm I'm talking to the oh, caller. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, uh, caller, are you there? Uh, yes. Okay, turn your radio off. That's number one. Oh, okay. Uh, everybody, as soon as you get on the air, turn your radio off because uh, you'll be able to hear it on the phone. Oh, anyway. anyway. All right. Do you have a question? Uh, actually, I had an answer to your question as to which politicians had already made their pact with Satan. <laughs> Um, I have been studying witchcraft and the occult for several years, actually about eight or nine. And? And I have discovered an insidious and heinous plot of Satan to try and rule over the world governments. And it involves, as you mentioned in an ad I do believe earlier, about a coin that has two-headed eagles. That is one of the signs of Satan. A coin that has two-headed eagles? A double-headed eagle, yes. Uh-huh. That is a sign of uh, a religion known as Freemasonry. And Freemasonry, most people in Freemason packs or Freemason lodges, which are all around the country and all over the world, would like you to believe that they're like a, like a little group, like a little uh, lodge, like a membership. Mm -hmm. That does good things, good deeds. Yes. In, in reality, Freemasons have a secret pact with the, de with the devil to go out and rule over the world and to bring Satan above ground on earth to be able to rule in complete uh, monarchy. All right. Do you have a question for uh, for Patsy? Actually, I wanted to ask her if she was a Freemason herself. All right. Patsy, are you? No, sir, I am not. But what the gentleman has just said on the phone, I would like to thank him. I would like to thank him kindly, even though he was some things that I don't quite agree with, and that's what makes America wonderful. But... He is dead on accurate to a degree. And I'd like to thank you, sir, whoever you are, very, very much. Because, Art, the conspiracy lies deep in politics that you would not believe. About the coin. Look who was in the presidency and the Congress and everything at that time. Look at the New World Order. Who brought that up for the first time? There's your answers. Go and seek these things out, America. Do it on your own. I'm not going to sit here and tell you, you do it for yourself. If you dig deep enough and overlook a lot of the red tape and a lot of the hogwash that's put in front of our faces on the TV and so on and so on, you will begin to understand that this conspiracy is very old, very, very old. In America, we are alive and well. All right. Uh, wild Card Line, you're on the air with Harlot. Hello. Good evening, uh, Patsy, and hi, Art. Oh, good evening, sir. This is Gazuki in Indian Springs. I got a, I actually got several questions, but hopefully I'll be able to get at least a, a few in. Do you have uh, to snap out of it when you feel sorry for something or someone? <laughs> no, I never okay. feel sorry for no one. Okay. Uh, if, if the uh, devil exists, as you proclaim, and uh, I decided to invite him over by calling him a perilous pot of protrusive protoplasm immersed in dung, and he uh, likes nothing other and to search and destroy, mm -hmm. uh, why will he or won't he cause or not cause havoc for me in the living? Well, sir, it all becomes down to one thing. How do you feel about God? Well, I believe in a God. Uh, I believe he is an extraterrestrial. What is your thoughts on that? I believe that we're all descendants from beings of a higher power. Okay, one more question. They are alien in essence. Yes, okay, sir. one more question. Do you believe Clinton is the Antichrist? I believe that President Clinton is doing what President Clinton should be doing at this time, sir. Exactly. I think that destiny uh, uh, lives itself out, and I believe that Clinton and all the presidents, as far as you can go back, has done their little deeds, have done their little part in establishing what we have today and what's coming in the future. Well, when I look at politicians 
uh, Patsy. Uh-huh. I have concluded over the years that to get to the Senate, to get to the presidency, mm -hmm. generally to get to high political office in this country, you almost, almost have had to have made some sort of pact with the devil. Well, you, you know, Art, that, that's true in a sense. You know, and, and, and I know it's true. A lot of what we see, and uh, we've had presidents and different people in the Senate, as, as you said, sir, and so on, you know, uh, we, we see a very uh, moral background, if you will. I mean, and, and I know Clinton and his problems and so on. What I'm talking about, you know, they well, or church, they, you know, this church group or this organization that they're affiliated with, or so on and so on. A lot of times, that is a screen because, like I said, I myself can walk into any church, and I mean anywhere, because I have been through over damn near, excuse me, 20 different denominations of faith. I have sat in their congregations. I have virtually almost become active in their congregations mm -hmm. without them even knowing who my master was. Of course. Well, when you look at a politician, one who mm -hmm. has achieved very high office, Patsy, he has achieved it more frequently than not through lying, oh, yeah. stealing, well, we know it's deceit, uh, and I, I could go on and on, a lot of the qualities that you seem to honor. Well, well we know it's crooked. I mean, it, there was a time at, at a rally down in uh, Louisiana that I attended one too, and it had to do with uh, the oil companies and different representatives down there. And, uh, <laughs> well, I would just say one thing at one time, I had a little bit of doings under the wraps, if you will, with a certain um, group of people that has held the governor, the governor, the governor's seat in Louisiana for quite some time. Some people kind of outlying in that organization that I dealt with, and I'm not going to go any further there for their own safety, if you will, and different things. But yes, Art, you are 100% correct. Mm -hmm. Politics is corrupt to the fullest. All right, East of the Rockies, mm -hmm. you're on the air with Harlan. Hello. 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 Go ahead, sir. Uh, yes, I just want to say that, yes, she's right. There is, there is a conspiracy of evil, but she left out that there's also a conspiracy of good out there. That, and well, I haven't real, left that out yet. Real witches, not, not uh, <laughs> Hollywood hogwash. Oh, please. You, you are a faker. Oh, please, sir. i tell you what. I would like for you to, uh, i tell you what. I have, like I said, been from coast to coast. Don't be surprised if one of us doesn't creep up around a dark corner one night and just say hi and shake your hand and seem to be one of the most nicest human beings that you have ever met in the world. And in the end, their diverse heart will conquer you. That's just the bottom line. See, sir? If I had to get up in front of a congregation and preach about God, I would. If that meant, in the end, in the end of it all, upholding Satan in the end. Well, I'm not talking about a church. See, I'm a practicing Wiccan. Oh, oh, goodness. Would you please come visit me? Can I give you my address? And, I would like to see you, and sir. What and you, what you are doing is trying to, to flame the fires of the Inquisition again. That's all you're trying to do. What, are you afraid of retribution? Are you afraid of retribution for your acts? I'm not. My acts aren't evil. We're still witchcraft. Witchcraft is not evil. Oh, okay. All righty, then. You see, I run into this all the time. You know, sir, and, I, I, and I'm going to use some intelligence here. I'm not going to call you no name, but, sir, please do me one favor. Get some backbone. Accept the reality of what you're doing is not godly. Okay? Please do. I'm not talking about but, God. But, sir, I hope, I hope in the end that you don't, in well, a way. What, uh, let me understand. Uh, Go you, ahead. You have accused her of being a fake. You say you're a Wiccan. Um, what are you? We practice a, a sort of nature worship, sir. Oh, boy. What, she, all she did was throw in some stuff from some Hollywood movies. Oh, She's just please. She's trying to get some propaganda out there. Oh, please. Maybe not. I mean, in, in a way, I understand what she's saying, and I'm not, believe me, uh, a long way from siding with her. And I understand, Art. But, I understand but on the that. other hand, you're saying you're worshipping 
nature and you're leaving out God. She's leaving out God and making no bones about it. You're leaving out God and trying to suggest you're kind of in the middle. No, there is there is a like a God force. It's not like a, a oh, physical being per se. <laughs> Mr. Bell? Yes. I would just like to tell that gentleman I hope he goes through it through life before he dies believing it. I, I do. Like I said, there are going to be those who go to hell out of ignorance and those who go to hell with honor, and I'm going with some honor, and so are my people. So well, I, hope, I actually understand what you're saying. Right. I, you know, I, I do, sir. I, I really do. Y you know, there was a time that I so much despised the Wiccans to the point to where if they, even without being an enemy, even without ever setting themselves against me, and they were laying on the ground bleeding, I would rather dump salt into their wound and actually give them blood. But, you know, in the general makeup of it all, they're silly. You know, at least. I'm not, on the, I'm not, I'm not here, America, to try to Satanize America. That's not my duty. That duty lies within your own heart, and with the general makeup of the things to come, just like El Nino. Yes, we better all stock up on food, because this El Nino is the beginning of something even more grand, more grand to take place in the next two years. We have not seen hurricanes, and we have not seen the multitude of storms that are going to come down on North America and the world until, uh, until two years from now. Just be prepared, America. Art is actually right. You... We better buy food, and we better stock up and prepare to, to make it the hard way because this is going to be some hardships like never seen before. Anything else, caller? See, it, it, the Wiccans have had this problem for years. Oh, please. Because people like her have always come out and saying that witchcraft is evil and everything, and it's not. Oh, we want to help society better itself just as any other religion of the right-hand path does. Uh, sir? Yes? In human nature for years, you know, I can almost understand this love one another, treating one another well, saying, you know, love nature, love the tree that's in your backyard. Yeah, we need them around. You better believe we need them around. But Wiccan isn't going to stop the destruction of this world. And by human nature ourselves, we are an aggressive race of people. All right. Uh, I've got to ask you both to hold it right there. All right. Back now to Patsy. Or Harlot, your choice. Here she is. Uh, Patsy, two faxes, two very different reactions. Okay. One, hey, Art, I don't suppose you could open a cute, cuddly cat lover's line after your satanic guest leaves, could you? Okay. I need to hear something that will take away the heebie-jeebies she's giving me. Yikes, she is scary. I mean, really scary. And so there's one who believes, and here's one who doesn't. That's Patsy's position is laughable. <laughs> In order to be a Satanist, you first must believe in the same God that Christians do. And that immediately shows that Patsy has no awareness of the truth of the universe. Anything else she claims to know is so much bunk. Patsy doesn't really have a problem with God. She obviously has a problem with Christianity and Christianity and expresses it as a total and complete rebellion against it much as the most virulent uh, anti-smokers are people who used to smoke. I feel sorry for her and her waste of this life and the baggage she most likely will carry to whatever comes after this existence. Bud in San Diego. Oh, interesting. And as I light a cigarette and take a drink of my vinegar, most unholy drink that I have just made, <laughs> very interesting. <laughs> You know, believing in God. I said, I think I made that point clear. I do believe in the existence of God. I just oppose Him. Did you ever? Um, oh, did you ever worship God? There was a time in my life that, as we all have a free agency and a freedom of choice. Yes. I decided at one time, Mr. Bell, and excuse me for the first time tonight, I am going to sit down. That's quite all right. Pull out a chair here. There was a time in my life that I decided to see if there was a chance that God could impact my life. Mm -hmm. And I went to a little church home, and due to the embarrassment of that church, I will leave them nameless. Okay. I went there, and I attended for quite some time, and I mean some time. 
It wasn't like a couple of times, you know, I went to church and said, okay, here we go. I understand. You, you <laughs> gave it a, a good college try. Thank you. <laughs> Just in order to see. And uh, I went there and I learned and I attended for months and then I decided, well, let me see. Let me see here if I really do have a choice. Well, I did have a choice. And I went and I got before the place there where you kneel and ask for repentance of your sins and so forth like that. And, uh, Stay good and close to the phone, Patsy. Oh, oh, yes, sir. And to ask for repentance of sin, you know, I got on my knees in front of the, uh, what was established there in, in, in a well-structured church. And uh, during this process, I was asked if I was actually prepared to give my life to God to make a, if you will, the ultimate sacrifice, basically a symbolic sacrificing of yourself mm -hmm. in order to pick up thy cross and carry it, if you will. Yes. I did that. And for a time it seemed like, you know, there's something here. As it began to evolve to the point to where I began actually talking to people about God and working with different youth and so forth and so on, I began to notice little things in, in my life began to be demolished, I mean hard. And I asked myself, you know, I know of the devil, but this is going too far. I found myself in a state of heavy sleep one night. It was the strangest thing that I have ever encountered in my entire life, this state of sleep. I awoke partially nude, my bosoms hanging out. I'm laying on a sand, a kind of a coal, or, or ash colored sand. There was no trees, there was, there was nothing there. And I remember looking over my left shoulder, and there stood an angel, a virtual angel. And this being looked at me on all fours on, in that dirt, in, in that sand, and quickly, with a rise of a hand, pointed upward. I looked up, and I looked into a light, the most incredible light I have ever seen. And a voice, a virtual thundering voice, said to me, I would never forsake anyone, but you will forsake me. And at that point in time, and this is I'm not trying to sound too uh, uh, cliche here, a bolt of lightning came out of the cloud it hit so hard that I virtually bounced off of my floor out of the sleep state. I hit the floor hard. I was in a massive cold sweat. My entire bedding was, I could wring the water out of it. So you were virtually just told you were a Judas. And let me finish, if I may, please. Mm. After that... I began to, I still attend the church, but I began to go into a rebellious state within the church. I one time asked the pastor of that church a few questions right in front of the entire congregation, and everybody there turned their head and they looked at me with marvel. How could someone stand in their congregation and ask the questions that I asked? And pretty much my question was simple. Is God the liar? Doesn't God preordain everything? Well, as you can imagine, Art, that didn't go over well in the church. And um, I was asked to leave, and I left. For another few months thereafter, I still held on to a slim belief into the God order. I like calling it that sometimes. But it eventually became obvious to me that, no, you're, you're not a part of this. So then you really regard everything God is as a lie. 
in a lie, well, the reason I asked that at the time, it, it, could I explain? The reason I asked that at the time was because of those words, past, present, and future. And the scripture saying that we all have a, uh, the basic freedom to choose, the freedom to live our lives as we see fit. But in the end, you are going to receive either a eternal torture mm -hmm. or an eternal fulfillment in, in, in heaven. And, and I ask myself, if I'm God, in which I at times do not have no problem putting myself in God's shoes, if I am God, would I have, would I have allowed this to happen this way? No. I, I, I would not have allowed it that way. And to read scripture and, and to see people praying and all these other things, I often wonder if it's not all from God's point of view, if God isn't the, the, the liar and the conniver and our master, Satan, is the way, the truth, and the light of the world for all to follow and to have a fulfillment on earth and in his own kingdom. It's complicated. And like I said, I'm willing to dance any dance, period, as long as one thing happens, and that is that there is no exit from the dance floor. I have called many times here locally, preachers, and I have asked simple questions. I had one preacher tell me right in this city of Salt Lake that my questions regarding Adam and Eve, regarding Cain, and what people on earth existed when Cain was told to leave and go into the land of Nod, whichever it was, and to there he would begin to spring forth life, and, and, but he would be uh, marked. Marked for who? That he would uh, be a criminal, if you will, wanted in different things. Who was there? Who was on the planet? There had to be other life forms. I really believe there had to be. And God permitting incest, the only way that the earth could be populated without the use of another life form on this planet was by incest. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we are all descendants from the act of incest. And later down the road, when enough people got on earth, I guess God changed his mind and all of a sudden said, incest is no good. All but right. it was good enough for him to populate the earth. I understand. Uh, first time caller line, you're on the air with Harlot. Hi, Art. Hello. Uh, hi, Patsy. Hi, there, sir. How are you? Uh, not bad. How about yourself? Oh, couldn't be better at this time. Okay, well, um, she's telling the absolute truth, and there's no question in my mind that, that Satan is with her in every single way. Um, not only that, but um, there's one thing that she isn't telling, and maybe she might not believe this. We'll see. Satan is here now. Satan is ruling the earth now. Okay. Oh, um, oh yes, sir. I agree with there you, There is no I'm doubt about it. This is Satan's world right now. This is Satan's hour. Not mm -hmm. for long, but it is his hour. And a lot of the, the callers so far um, that have called in is, you know, they're, they're basically confused. She's not. She is prepared to die for what she's doing. She's prepared for her second death, and she knows it's coming. Okay. She is willing, and she's accepted this. She knows there's nothing that's going to change that. She is not saying that Satan is going to win. She has denied God, okay? And in doing so, she has for, forfeited her chance for salvation and her chance for eternal life. I would agree with that based on what I've heard. May okay, now the, where the basis is, when the devil was thrown down to earth... Um, was approximately 1914. Art, you know that before World War I, uh, there was no precursor. There was no um, identifying factor that would say World War I is going to start. We know that it started over, over the assassination of one man. Okay? Uh, when Babylon was crushed, there was a mention. I, I've been trying to research this for you, but I haven't been able to before we got on the air. When Babylon was crushed, uh, basically it was foretold in, uh, in a vision uh, prophet to the king of Babylon at the time that in seven years, one year equaling, or one day equaling a year, um, that uh, the beginning of the end would start. That equals to 2520. 
you minus 1914 from 2520, it equals 606, 607 BC. That is the date in which Babylon was crushed. Okay? This, this is, without a doubt, the time of Satan. And Thank you. I'm on the other side. I'm a believer in God. I totally 100% praise okay. Jesus' name. And may, the best part of it something? is, okay, may, may I, may I, I'm not going to be saved. All right, let, let her say something. May I oh, sure. inflect myself in this? Thank you, sir. Now, Satan has been on earth before 1914. Now, I can guarantee you that. If he wasn't, well, I think you search scripture out and you'll find that answer for yourself. I agree with the caller. I agree with him 100% a lot, he says. And I do thank him. I do thank him kindly for saying those words because I will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Caller, mm-hmm. are you there? Oh, yeah. Well, thank you. Hmm. Well, this is our time. I find it very unfortunate. May, may, I, may I continue? Oh, sure. Sir? I'm just responding to that. Okay. I find it very grateful. Um, this is our time. But the events that are coming, there will be also another time. Yes, that after time, the thousand years. And, and when that time comes, our people will raise their ugly head. And like I told Mr. Mr. Bell earlier, what Charles Manson did is putrid in every form. It's just a sick human being. We're not going to uh, hallucinate. We're not going to uh, have people just run out and do our dirty work. We are all going to do our dirty work. And when the evil begins... We will have mercy on no one. You know, many times through biblical history, God's people failed. God had to punish his own people time and time again. This time, when, that one, when, when, when this all takes place, they better had be on the right track. Because oh, without a doubt. I mean, there's, there's no if, ands, or buts about what but, you're saying in terms of, not, of that 1,000 years. And if they're not on the right track, the punishment that Satan's rule, if, when, we, when we do take our, our stand on this globe, and even more than you can even begin to fathom what we're doing now. No, I pretty much know it. Okay, I respect that. They had better be close to God because, believe you me, what's coming when that mark, and when, when you, the only way you're going to be able to uh, trade for food or, or survive. You're talking about the number. Right, the mark of the beast. There's going to be a lot of Christians, or, or, and I'm not calling you Christians. Please, I'm not directing you saying, okay, he's a Christian. and no, Okay, I'm just saying, a lot of people who believe in God will be put to the ultimate test in that day. Right. We will have to die for that belief. There's exactly. No about it. Exactly. Just they, like you. This is, this is, you're talking to the light. I'm talking to the darkness, okay? And I welcome There's the conversation. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And I welcome to the conversation. I really do. This makes more relevant sense to me than talking to a Wiccan. All right. Well, well you, know, you, you view her then as the real McCoy, sir. Excuse me? I said you view her as the real McCoy, that she believes what she is saying. Take a look at her words, Art. I mean, like she has already lied a few times in, in terms of, of um, you know, uh, she comes from a long line. She must now be referring to the fact of her reincarnated line, or her parents wouldn't have been surprised at the fact that she was drawing pentagrams. Denial. They would have taught her. Denial. They were denial. in denial, sir, because they couldn't live with the fact that it was actually affecting them right there. Can I ask you one question before before Art goes to another caller? Uh, I would, yes, sir. Be, feel free. Yes, okay. Um, my question is to you. From which line do you come from in terms of if it's not your birth parent's line, from which line do you come from? This my line mother. Of, my of mother's riches. side of the family. It is my mother's side of the family. I, I said that. Maybe I didn't make myself clear, but it was my... Mother's side of the family, not my father's. It was my mother's. And because it is my mission to do so, I do pray for you. Hello. Did I'm you? Here. Did, did, yeah. Do you hear him? He said, I, "Pray I what?" Said it, because it is my mission to do so, I do pray for you, regardless of what you want. And and sir, with no, well, let me tell you, it won't happen now. I mean, it will not happen now, sir. You are my enemy, and if this was the day of the apocalypse right now and everything began, I would behead you. All right, we're going to have to hold it right there. This should be interesting. Uh, Harlot, yes, uh, um, listen to this. Uh, dear Art, welcome back, Art. It seems to me that Harlot has solved her guilt and identity crisis. 
<laughs> the belief of Satan and hell is a crock. It is an excuse for all the wrong she has caused in this world. Mm. How do you react to that? I react to that by saying these words. I and I alone am the blame for all my sin, for all my actions, and all my dirty deeds. Done dirt cheap. I and I, I and I alone must suffer the consequences thereof. Mr. Bell, I for years have been asked that somewhat that question, and people just don't seem to be able to grasp the fact, the, 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 the outright fact that I am able to boldly state my damnation. Mm -hmm. I am not guilty of a uh, 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 crisis. I am guilty of my words. I am guilty of my actions. Mm -hmm. I am guilty to be sentenced to eternal death. Said and done. And I freely accept it. I have had a lot of traumatic events in my life that have, yes, they have swayed me in one way or the other, like the death of my son, Mr. Mm -hmm. Bell. Sure. But just because of the death of my son, I don't hang this, uh, okay, uh, God, it's your fault. The death of my son was meant to be. I wake up sometimes, Mr. Bell, with a longing for my baby, for my five-year-old child that was taken away from me by my husband, who I am no longer with. By his hands... He took the life of my child, and I will never forgive him for that. He is no longer on this earth now, and I will never forgive him for that what, that act. But it's not it, that did not thrust me into this satanic belief of mine. This is something that I longed for as even as a child. It was my birthright. There was a time when me and my brother, I'll never forget this, we were on a trip one time, and he was praying to God, and I, we were young, Mr. Bell, and I uh, got down by him on my knees, and my big bro, you know, years older than I and so forth, and was looking at me, and I was sitting there, and I said, you know, my little prayers, and when I got through saying it, I just, just out of nowhere, I went, hell Satan, hell Satan. He jumped up off the floor, and he looked at me like, what? Yeah. And I looked up at him, and I just went, I don't know. And I ran and crawled in my bed, and I threw the covers up over my head out of embarrassment. I, it was something I didn't even plan. It was something that was just so, it just happened, you know, bang, right there. It just happened. Mm -hmm. uh, here's, here's another fact. Yeah. Uh, this is the most important question you could ever ask the harlot. Ooh. Ask her, how will God, in the end time, smite Satan, the devil, and all his followers. She will not know the answer. Uh, he will smite us down in the end. When the angel comes down from heaven with the keys in his hand, and those keys will be the keys of the bottomless pit that that angel will open. First, he will be cast there for a thousand years and placed there. And then the angels will come down and loose him. And for a thousand years, for a little season, he will be able to roam once again in order to establish the satanic rebellion on earth, greater than it ever anyone could ever fathom right now. And in the end, fire shall come out of the mouth of God, and it shall devour us. Satan shall be cast and thrown into the pit where the Antichrist and the false prophet already are. Actually, I think you did get it right. Uh, the answer is that in less than a blink of an eye, all the evil that they have done unto mankind will be thrust upon them, burning them, and leaving them only the pain and hell that they have created for others. Their karma will be complete. And that is absolutely true, and we fully accept it. Well, I think you gave the right answer. First time caller line. First time callers call area 702-727-1222. Okay, we're going to have to start all over again. The one thing we oh. don't want you to do is to put your last name on the air, dear. Okay. So let's begin again. Your name is? Tara. Tara. And where are you, Tara? Cape Girardeau, Missouri. The home of Rush Limbaugh. Yes. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, I'm a practicing druid. Uh, first, I'd like to say I appreciate her honesty. Um, I understand that there's a balance on this planet between good and evil, and I respect her decision. And I, I believe her because uh, there's a lot of people who claim to be Satanists, but they're just drug addicts and they're trying to rebel. Um, That's not what you're hearing from her. Right, right. Um, I, I don't believe magic is evil, though. Um, because I choose God. I don't believe in Jehovah or Jesus necessarily. I think he was a prophet, a very intelligent person. Hmm. Um, I use magic as a tool to better my surroundings, to improve myself. And I believe God resides in nature, so I'm not really going against him. Where, though, do you think that power comes from? Like I said, God resides in nature. And um, God is in with all people, and I and I draw from that which is in me that is a part of God. Is what she says possible, Harlot, or is uh, she fooling herself? Well, I will be honest. Uh, is her name Tara? Mm-hmm. Tara. Yes. Uh, with all due respect, may I ask your age, please? I am 21. 21. Oh, I remember when I was 21. Mm. Tara. Yes. With all due respect. Keep going that way, hon. I hope you keep believing it, and I hope that you never sway from your faith because I will welcome mm. your presence in that unholy cup of tea, if you will, that we will sip together with fire and brimstone. And let me tell you, I, let me, Tara, let me finish, please. Okay. If you search your scripture, and I can understand, we, the human race has always ran. We, we, we're a race of runners just as much as we are a race of barbarians. We run from reality. You sound like to me that you are running because you're not willing to walk out on a limb and below that limb there is nothing. And to hang on it and to believe that there is a one true God and a one true devil. Yes. The scripture says that anything, witchcraft, astrology, and so on and so on, it's in the New Testament, hon, is not mm -hmm. of God. What I am confused with is you you say you you sound like you believe that God, that the Bible was written by God. Okay. Now listen to me. That is my mission is to confuse people. <laughs> yeah, that I is know. my mission because the more people I confuse and if they die confused and all of a sudden they they give up their ghost and they die and they they do not ask for repentance, then my mission is successful. That's all I set out to do. You can do your little witchcraft. You can play your little games. You can use all your little toys. But no. the bottom line is that, hon, is that my mission is is to keep you happy. Keep Satan keeps you happy. See, I know Satan the power you is not in it. the ritual. You can use as many crystals and stuff as you want to. I don't use those. But, no, a lot of those Wiccans do, and they think that's where their power comes from, from doing this and that just they right. Do. Yes, they That's do. not where the power is at. And they're blinded by Satan, and uh, if okay. Satan keeps blinding and I know them, right now, power to it. I know right now both sides are sniffing each other out, but and then, we're just drawing the lines. Well, hon, the lines that we're going to draw are these. We will clean the field of the metal in order to establish the ultimate battleground between God and Satan. Everyone else in the middle will be only not crushed by the hand of God, but will be crushed by Satan. We want to destroy the metal, wipe it out, and in the end, you will be crushed Me. in order for us to establish the battleground to take on God face to face. I do have a question. What, um, so do you think there are only Christians and Satanists? What about Hindus who are in for the light? Let me tell you something. This is nothing new. There is only one evil and one good. And when, until the world begins to wake up to it, hey, that, that, that's just the way it is. I prefer people who proclaim God over people who practice an evil art and not accept the father of it. I'd rather sit down and have a decent dinner and a casual conversation with a preacher of a holy faith than to sit down with people who practice magic but are not willing to accept the consequences, nor the Father, the one true Father of all evil. And, and magic is evil in any way you look at it. If you, any way, hon, it is not a natural 
thing. It is not a natural human trait to want to practice magic. It's not. You have to be willing to accept the consequences of what you're doing. I clearly understand what you're saying. Uh, mm -hmm. From Dale in Atlanta, the following. Art, I really admire your guest. She seems to have a sort of sexual magnetism, almost erotic. Ooh. Is this also one of her entrapping characteristics? Yes, it is. I will, especially young virgins. I love to find a young guy out there, sway my magic upon him, place him under my spell, allure him with fantasy of sexual fulfillment. Well, then I guess I don't have to really ask you this next question. We've yeah. heard Patsy's beliefs. Now, what things does she do to advance Satan's cause? That well, clearly was one of them. What else? Another one to advance Satan's cause is, like I said, I uh, constantly bombard the Christian faith. I love, for, for, I mean, let me give you an example. I love calling the 700 Club telemarketers, the people who are uh, on their little prayer lines. I like giving them the time of day. And and believe you me, I do. Another thing that I do is that when someone is an alcoholic, okay? Yes. I'm not going to sit there and tell them no more. Why don't you stop? You want more beer? Hey, baby, I'll give you more beer. Someone's sitting out under a shade tree saying, hey, ma'am, you got two bucks. Here, here's five. Go buy two quarts of beer. Don't buy one. Buy two. Drink yourself into oblivion. As long as you're drunk, as long as I can keep people drunk, that keeps them away from God. As long as I can walk down the street and see a friend of mine, which will remain nameless, working at a little store, who had worked at a little store up from my street, who preferred, I tried to put a knock on him and tried to get him in. Well, sorry, he preferred my uh, fiancé over me. I told him flat out, keep doing it. Be the biggest abomination unto God that you can. I'm all for you. Anything, Art, anything at all, any way at all, it, it doesn't matter. Like I said, I would lick a dog. I would, I, I would make a person believe that, hey, guess what? Satan is joyful, pleasant. There is no hell. If that's what it takes to keep them away from God and to take them to hell, so be it. Wild card line, you're on the air with Harlot. Hello. Hello. Oh, uh, hi. Um, my name is Sor S. D. and um, I belong to the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. And um, oh. I'm, I'm calling from Honolulu, Hawaii. Oh. And um, I can't believe that you guys sound so clear. <laughs> um, anyways, what I wanted to say, I, I totally agree with her. And um, the, the younger caller that called in just before me, um, it was, I mean, exactly. I remember when I was 21, and, um, you know, you just don't really understand, I don't think, what life is all about at that age, really. But um, what I want to get to the point is um, I joined the order about three years ago, and um, I'm still in the outer order. I'm at the Orcus grade. Um, and are you familiar with that? I'm not. Um, oh. Is she? Uh, I'm here. I'm are you here. familiar with that order? Uh, vaguely. 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 Can I ask okay. you first what part of Hawaii that you're in? No, well, see, the, the order is in um, Fontana, California, actually. The temple is. No, I was and asking you what part of Hawaii do you live in. Oh, Honolulu. Oh, great. My mother lived there for quite some time. Well, yeah. Yeah, she did. <laughs> anyways, I haven't been there um, yet, but I will be there soon. One of these yeah, days I'm getting there. Yeah, it's hot here right now. Uh -huh. Anyways, um, what I was going to ask you is, um, um, so, I mean, like, we, we practice, like, ancient Egyptian um, mm -hmm. high magic, mm -hmm. and I do believe that, you know, they, the order tends to think that, you know, they're, they're on, a, like, a godly path and everything. Oh, but to me, I know that, you know, because, I mean, we're not supposed to. We're taught, like, different. In each grade you progress, you're taught different things, right. of the, different of the, of the, um, mm -hmm. the Western mysteries, different rituals and so on. And, um, and it's just, like, I've done evil things to people. I have almost killed someone before who's hurt me very badly. And you know what? Um, it, it's, you know, I just felt that this person deserved what they got, you know. That's right. And um, it's just, you know, and I'm fully, I'll fully take responsibility of it. You know, I had to do what I had to do. Can and I, that's I, just how it goes sometimes, may, you know. May I ask you a question? 
Yes, sir. Uh, what did they do to you? Just quickly, please. Um, well, you don't have to go into detail, hon, but was it uh, physical violence? They um, totally betrayed me and, and everything. Well, right. Well, you see, hon, in that situation, I would have to find justification in order to death by betrayal. Now, if they gave me that justification, then death is what they would receive. I have it almost. I have, through supernatural power, taken life, and I will continue to do it if I am justified. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as physical retaliation, it must be measured exactly what type of physical retaliation do I take out on them. Mm -hmm. Now, if this person, say, were to have beaten you or caused a physical harm to fall upon you, well, believe you me, my sword would have went through their body, and they would not exist in the physical life that we know. Well, yeah. this person caused me very much and you uh, were justified. inner pain, very much inner emotional pain. And you pain. were justified, hon, but believe you me, I will say this bef before we go on, I hope you remain in that faith. Just one day, sometime, somewhere, wake up to the unholy master of hell because the Egyptian faith caused great chaos in the lives of God's people in the past. Mm -hmm. And believe you me, hon, you're on the right track. Just forget the nonsense. Open, yourselves up to, open yourself up for an eternal evil that lasts forever, that you will never fulfill your entire power until you really let yourself lay into the arms of the unholy master of hell. Well, I don't know if I'll totally go... <clears throat> Totally in that direction. One but never, I'm very neutral. I'm, I, I, I understand. I understand. I to myself, hey, if something gets me mad, then I have to take care of it. Then I got to do it. You, you got know? all. You got all the natural ability there, hon. You, you got a. You're on the right track. And you know, all I'm saying to you is that one day in your life, give it a shot. If you do, fine. If you don't, well, I'll see you where well, I'm I have, going. I have <laughs> looked into it, and you know, I just. If, you know, over. I was. I actually, I was trying to get into the OTO order, which yeah. is um. When mm -hmm. um, Alistair Crowley had original, well, he first started the Golden Dawn, and he broke off into the OTO. Mm -hmm. but they don't have a correspondence course. Um, you have to like live near the temple. Son, I will say this before you. it goes off the air. Bible Belt, get ready. The most unholy book ever written is the Holy Bible. Search it out. Well, I, be it. I believe it. I was raised um, Catholic. All right, you two, listen. We've got to hold it there. Um, mm -hmm. Harlot, hold on. Yes. Uh, we've got news at the top of the hour. All right. Harlot, are you there? I'm here, Art. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to do a couple of things. One, uh, read you this first fax. Okay. If Harlot is a true Satanist, she will publicly repudiate Jesus Christ and all his works, stating that he is not her Savior. If she will not do this, then she still believes in Christ and is not a complete Satanist. May I begin? Begin. To the entire world, I rebuke Christ my Savior. I rebuke him. I stand against him, for I am a worker of wickedness, iniquities, and love the fulfillment of sinful joy. I deny the cross. I deny the crucifixion. For Jesus walked not this earth in the flesh. I deny him. I will never, ever pick up his cross he can carry it himself. I will never, ever proclaim him as my Savior. All right. And I did what I did in that church, Mr. Bell. I did out of virtue to know what must, what I must have known at that time. All right. I, 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 okay. I, I buy what you're saying, uh, okay. that you believe that, and, yes. and that, that is your firm belief. Thank you. Uh, facts 2 follows it up. Uh, dear Art, okay, I believe she knows and accepts that she is on the path to hell and eternal damnation. Mm -hmm. Who in their right mind would choose pain? Pain hurts. Pain is not comfortable, especially for eternity. That is the only part I just don't understand. From Steve in State Line, Nevada. Steve, <laughs> you're close to me. Um, I love pain. I inflict pain on my own body, and it motivates me well. I have many scars on my arm. Mm -hmm. Each scar represents an act carried out against my victim. 
Mr. Bell, I would rather be tormented. I would rather burn and, and feel that, that, that favorite, that, that, that heat, to have my body have done horrible things done to it in the kingdom of hell than to step one foot or even give God a blink to enter his kingdom. I hope that when I go before him, that when those books are opened, my greatest dream come true is when they open that Lamb's Book of Life, that they call it. I am not found there. I wish not to be, and I will not be. And you brought up a question yourself, uh, Art, that I am very glad you were going to ask me why. Correct? Why right. I would choose to live this Th way. That's right, sure. Okay. I love fulfilling my human desires. If you can uh, grasp what I'm saying here, I love to stack my treasures on earth. I love to follow my human nature in all its most animalistic ways, mm -hmm. in its most brutal, most sexual, most... Um, the fulfillment that it gives me is almost indescribable. I love to be able to perform the unholy acts that I perform on my own body. I love to caress that loving and uh, satisfying feeling uh, of uh, physical fulfillment. In the Christian faith, I find that many people forego the natural human desires. See, I am the type of person that if Dan or whoever it might be, I don't even know a Dan, down the road decided to commit adultery. I would be there with open arms, seeking the uh, fulfillment of that natural human animal element. All right. Um, let's go back to the phones. A lot of people want to talk to you. East of the Rockies, you're on the air with Harlot. Hello. Hello. Yes, hello. Hi. My name is Naomi, and I'm 29 years old. Where are you, Naomi? I'm Birmingham, Alabama. Okay. Oh, hi. 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 <laughs> Um, what I wanted to ask you is, you know, you're no different than a lot of Baptist preachers right here in Alabama. <laughs> and, um, you really? know, why can't you believe that God comes to different people in different cultures all over the world? I didn't say that. I did not proclaim that. God approaches himself how he wishes to be approached. What I meant and what I'm going to say is that any faith, period, I don't care what it is that proclaims God is offset immediately themselves as my enemy. The people in the middle, not so much. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. I understand that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I am a Wiccan. I have been a Wiccan a long time. I know that. My mother was what you are. And I was raised in North Carolina in a cult right outside of Charlotte. And it was horrible. I lived a horrible life. Mm -hmm. My mother was completely foul. She mm -hmm. beat me and my sister. She she was a horrible mother. Did, did uh, she have justification in that beating? No. Me and my sister learned to walk on eggshells at a very early age. Okay. Well, a lot of that, hon, there are people in this world. I have known people with a godly faith that have went overboard with uh, abuse. Okay. But you and seem like you're the type of person you would love that. Now, you would if, just love that. Ma'am, listen to me one second. I had a child that was brutally taken from my arms and from my life. Well, I had a sister okay. practically taken the same way from my mother. Oh, oh, okay. okay. So we have a common ground here. The only thing that I can see here in the differ, to, to differentiate, to make this different, is that if my son would have been given his father justification, so bad, but my son did not. How can a five-year-old give anybody any justification? How can a small child give anybody any justification? I know where you're going here. I know where you're going here, and I'm going to tell the entire world right now. I do not, I repeat, I do not harm children. I believe firmly that my son, if he had given, given justification to my ex, I didn't say he did. If he 
could have, if he would have, so be it. Her question was, how could a five-year-old give such a justification? Well, I put it to you simple. I had a five-year-old child one time take a knife and cut me. And if it had not been for the simple fact... What did you do to that child? Nothing. They were playing around. The child ran by me, ma'am, and we began just goofing around just like adults do with children sometimes, just having a little fun. And all of a sudden, I felt a cut on my back. And well, maybe just... that's the parent's fault, not that child. A five-year-old, you were right there. I'm down with the flu, and <sighs> it's a long story, Arbel. He took, he took him from me at a very early age. I understand that. So your yeah. son, uh, without a doubt, has gone to God. In my mind, he has gone to hell. At right. How can you say that? Why? Uh, based on what? Based on the simple fact that when he was born, I performed a certain ritual over him. That basically, I told Satan, and in this faith we don't ask, we tell, to beg an audience with God that this child be that of the devil, of himself, that he could use this child in a most unholy way and to do and to raise this child into this faith, you know, of course, with my help, of course. And um, Patsy, hasn't it occurred to you that if you really did that, that he took you up on your offer? And I'm happy that he did. Uh, that would just, when I oh, go into my God. eternal damnation, my son would be there. You know, Art, when you called me that afternoon and everything, I said that I would desecrate the birthplace of Christ. You said that, yes. And believe you me, I will, even at the consequences of my own death, I would desecrate that place. I would virtually wait to my menstrual cycle. And when I was on my period, and I virtually would blood that place, and I would perform a most unholy dance over it. When Jesus, when Jesus came, that was, in my opinion, the end of everything. We are suffering from his presence on this planet yet today. The church itself is nothing more than a gossip hall of money. The church foundation, all the churches combined, could solve all hunger on this planet in one day. They could do magnificent works on this planet. They do not do them. I find it hard for such a loving, compassionate belief to allow little sufferings on this planet that they could stop. They could put their assets together and stop them. But no, they let it fall on the shoulders of governments, politicians, so forth and so on, and nothing really ever gets done. A lot of the political issues and religious issues are, are nothing new. They've been argued as far back as as far as back as you can find a president. They're just argued in different ways, different techniques. It almost comes to the point that they don't. It kind of tells you they don't really want to solve a damn thing, because if they solve too many problems, there would be a lesser need of them. The church can consider themselves fortunate that Satan is the best friend they have ever had. They make millions of scaring people to death, Vir virtually scaring people that, that we've got to get to the church on time mm -hmm. or we're going to go to hell. All right. Uh, first time caller line, you're mm -hmm. on the air with uh, Harlot Patsy. Oh. Hi, Patsy. Hi there, sir. Um, hi, Art. It's a great show. Um, let me come online by saying um, that, first of all, I am a diehard Christian. Um, Good. Here we go. From a standpoint, um, if you would allow me, Patsy, I would like to say a few things in my belief, and then you're more than welcome to respond to them. I'd be more than happy. Um, I've been listening to this show for about two hours, and um, this uh, young lady, older lady, I don't know your age. 32. Has, has you, I'm sorry? 32. Okay. Uh, actually, the same age I am, has been using this to spread her belief um, of Satanism, or whatever she likes to call it, and... Um, I think for for a point, there needs to be a brought into a Christian sense in here and have a true Christian word uh, brought in because it seems like as I've been listening, um, 
there has been more of the opposites calling in for various different reasons. So from that aspect, um, not really, not really opposites. There have been uh, there have been Wiccans who have been calling in, but right. Wiccans are kind of in the middle. They seem to worship nature. They they certainly don't worship the devil. Uh, and I think that what we have here with Patsy, I am now beginning to believe more and more and more as the hours have gone by, we have the real McCoy. Oh, I, I give her full credit for being the real McCoy. Yeah. Don't doubt her in the slightest. And um, um, unfortunately, <laughs> she and I agree that the middle ground people are going nowhere quickly. Um, and um, <laughs> for that reason, as a Christian, it's, it's, uh, as the Bible says, it's either hot water or cold water. There is no lukewarm. Um, but that, that's the one place where you two are going to agree, and now it's going to go downhill from there. Uh, but respectfully, um, respectfully, I would like to say a few things. First of all, I think the problem with a lot of young Christians is they feel that um, they look at it as a power struggle, and in a sense, it's a power struggle from good and evil. But when you think of the word power, it naturally comes from evil. You see the movies, you see, you read the scriptures, you read histor history, and evil deeds seem to be the most powerful deeds. Christian Christianity, the life of living a godly life, is a more laid back, a quiet, a quiet belief, a trust in, in, the, in the fact that God's word is word. Um, but there are also Christian warriors, and from that stance, I think the problem with this is, and no disrespect towards her beliefs um, from a human being standpoint, from a Christian Satanism, of course we don't agree, and I won't even get into that, we don't have time. But the fact is, there are strong Christians out here. And, Patsy, just for your information, I listened to when you said you grew up when you were young, you drew the pentagram in the sandbox. There are also stories such as mine, the opposite is true. When I was three years old, before I had ever, before I was even old enough to understand what Christ was or who Satan was, my mother walked out in the backyard and found me burying a parakeet that, I had, died, that had died and saying a prayer over it before I had even knew, known what was going on. When I was seven years old, I heard my parents praying God's prayer. After hearing it one time, from then on, I have quoted it word for word. In the same sense, when I meet people, when I walk up on people, people tell me that there is a quiet calm to me. I've had pastors tell me, and when I'm saying pastors, the difference here is, is, is we agree on two things, actually. First of all, I also agree that in an entity, the church as a, as a central location is, um, how should I say this, with tact. Um, I don't agree with 90% of the so-called churches in the world today. Um, the reason I say that is it seems to me like as time has gone on, churches are in for more of what they can get as far as money-wise. The Word of God should be number one. That is what a church is about. In the Scriptures, a church is when two or more get together and speak of the Word of Christ. The fact of people getting together with 500s, 1000s, 3000s, giving all the money out, not knowing where half the money goes to, I don't believe in that. I have visited probably hundreds of churches in my lifetime from all different denominations <coughs> to find my way. I am at ease with myself because I have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with my Lord Jesus Christ. It's very strong, it's very subtle, but I have no doubt in my mind where I'm going. And with that being said, um, to add a little humor into this, the last Christian that came on here and said something to Pat Patsy to you about he was going to say a prayer. Uh -huh. and you responded were, if the apocalypse was coming today, I would have to behead you. Am I correct on that? Absolutely. Hello. I'm sorry? Absolutely. Ma'am, I would draw the line on my neck for you and bear it for you. Have a nice night, people. Oh, I figured he'd leave before I got a chance to say something. That's typically Christian. Art, can I comment? Go. Yeah, sure. Okay. Sir, I know you're still listening, which, if, uh, which I hope you are. I can respect slightly <laughs> what you just said, but there's one thing you hit on that just made my entire night laxed. There's nothing better to a satanic person than a relaxed Christian. The more relaxed you are, the lesser you impact the world. The lesser you impact the world, the greater we serve our purpose, because that's the less people you effect to go to heaven, opening the door for us to come in and me to infect their lives, plant a seed in their head, and the ultimate goal, straight to hell. I do thank you for being a lax Christian. We need more of you. <laughs> Wildcard Line, you're on the air with Harlot. Good morning, Art. Good morning, Harlot. Good morning. Most where, unholy morning. Where are you, uh, pray tell? I'm in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, Harlot... <laughs> 
I am a Dianic witch, and um, I'd like to go back to uh, what you said about magic not being not natural and a supernatural force. The way I view magic and the way it works, it's it's a force that science has yet to quantify. Think about it. 200 years ago, the way we were talking would seem magical. Yesterday... 200 uh, years ago, the way we were talking... Yeah, oh, yeah, they, you and I would both come, be burned. They, they would come to my door. And you oh, know yeah. what? Oh, yeah, I know. Both and you, you know and I and Art would be, would be uh, burned in the town square. And I would love it. Don't rule it out yet. I'm not. The way, well, but what I'm, the point I'm making is that today's science is yesterday's magic. Um, magic okay. is a force like electricity. I can use it to run my computer, or I could kill somebody with it. Okay. It's how you use it that counts. Right, and let me tell you something. It's a responsibility taken, therefore, thereof also counts. See, I will kill, and I will take the total blame for it. Let, Art, I oh, want to say oh, yeah. something here. Um, you, Art, I really want to say something here. Okay, let her, let her say something, ma'am. Oh, sure. Okay. I, I was agreeing with her. I, I, I want to say something here. If I were to go out tomorrow and commit an act of cold-blooded murder, I would go into a courtroom without, well, they would appoint a defense naturally, but I would go up in front of the judge, ma'am, and look that person right in the eye and said, end of trial. I have done what I've done. Now you carry out what you must carry out. There will be no trial. I am guilty. I would boldly stand and say in front of a jury, I killed them. There is nothing, no second guessing, no games, no OJ. I can tell you that for sure. <laughs> I would boldly admit. I believe trial. you. I believe you. Oh, would, Mr. Bell. I I agree with you. Um, you do have to take responsibilities um, for for your actions in this life, definitely. Um, and, and Satan is, you know, and Satan is my master, and everything that I do, it's like if I curse someone. I let it be known. Let it be recorded on this night. Let it be written in the books that must be re that this must be recorded in. That I, Harlot, I, Patsy, have committed this evil act of magic, and I will be held accountable. I must be held accountable. I must receive no mercy and retaliation. I must be more hateful than my enemy. I must always be more hateful, more conniving, and more evil. The more retaliation that I bring upon myself, it increases the evil. Hell, Satan, that's what I'm all about. Um, I guess I have a question for you. Yes, um, I'm I'm pagan myself, and mm -hmm. I what I don't. I've always viewed Satanism as a radically dissenting Christian sect mm. because you follow <laughs> the same um, the same belief system. It's just you work the opposite side of the street. Ma'am, it is nowhere near the same. Let me give you a perfect example. In the Christian church, they do this. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the merciful and so on. Blessed they may be in the eyes of God unblessed, unholy blessed they are because they will be trodden upon and stomped down by cloven hooves and our army. It's, it's different, hon. It's totally different. Yeah, that, that's total, what, yes, it is totally different. Yeah, the Christian you're, you're church does the not uphold... The, there. the Christian church does not uphold one iota. They do not uphold magic. They do not uphold the practice of any art that is not coming directly from their word. They do not uphold the Christian realm and our realm are too different. You slap me, I'm going to knock your cotton-picking head off. <laughs> you stomp my foot, I'm going to cut your foot off. It is totally different, hon, totally different, taken to the extreme. Extreme violence, extreme brutality, extreme evil. That's why I have got Wiccans right here in this town, a beautiful little quiet town of Salt Lake City. They all talk, but they don't want to encounter me face-to-face. -face. 
Because, hon, I will tell you now, when it gets down to the white on the rice, I don't play the game. I'm not going to, you know, goof around with little incantations and little spells and, and little hexes and little different things. The bottom line of it is they cross my path and they provoke me to, to justified, unholy reasons. I will kill through supernatural powers if I choose it. If I do not choose it, I will carry out brutality, my coven will, my blood lord will, my warlocks will carry out a brutality of medieval proportions without any remorse. I have warlocks, on that will stand there and wait for a cop to get there. They won't run. Okay. Um, we've got very little time. Eastern Art, yes. Can I do something, please, before we go off the air? Please. Oh, yes, yes. One last thing I want to say is, hell Satan, great is his power. I understand the freedom of choice. I understand your position, Art. You're carrying out your destiny in this world. Hell Satan, we're glad to have you. I'm glad to have you on the airways because it does give a sense of reality to things that are coming in the quickening and so on. But world, Satan exists. I exist. As long as Satan exists, evil exists. I hope you Wiccans all don't do a damn thing because the middle will be crushed. That way the real Armageddon can begin. Art, I would like to thank you for the time. Hell Satan, great is his immortal power, the primordial son of God himself. Well, good night, Harlot. Thank you uh, for being I'll here. I'll take a one more phone call if you will. No, we're about out of time here. Okay. Good, right. night. good night, America and Art. I would like to be calling around and just dropping in sometime and saying hi. All right. That'd be fine. Take care. You too. All right. Um, I'm going to have to do a lot of thinking about all I heard. It's kind of strange. Early in the evening, I thought, I really thought that um, we were being put on. As the hours wore on, it became absolutely obvious that we were not being put on that she believes exactly what she's saying. In a way, I think that it did Christians a great service to hear this. In a way, with regard to those who have not chosen, those who are in the middle, and I count myself among those, by the way, I think she's absolutely correct. That is not to say in any way that I agree with her. But with regard to those who waffle, those who are in the middle, there is a great area of agreement between those who would call themselves devout Christians and, you know, our, our friend Hail Satan here. So, very provocative indeed. And I'm going to have to do... Uh, some very serious thinking about what I've heard over these hours, as I'm sure perhaps you will as well. Fascinating. And uh, as you can see, I uh, will continue to do this and explore all kinds and forms of talk radio and uh, uh, ideology that many may disagree with or be offended uh, by. And, uh, and this night uh, was no different. In fact, this night was really, in many ways, a prime example of that exploration. So there you have it. Uh, and that actually is going to wrap up the week for me. I want to remind my audience that I will be in Encinitas. This is the one book signing I'm going to do for my, my book, The Quickening. I find it interesting as well that all sides seem to agree on the fact of the quickening. Both sides. It is occurring. Perhaps it is marking the day that all of you were talking about with Harlot, with Patsy. That's one other area that both sides seem to agree on. We are quickening. That's the book. I'll be signing copies of it in the one book signing that I plan to do. It'll be in Encinitas at, uh, at Barnes & Noble, beginning at about 10 o'clock in the morning. Barnes & Noble, located at 1040 North El Camino uh, Real. 
1040 North El Camino Real in Encinitas. 10 o'clock Saturday morning. See you there. From the high desert, I'm Art Bell with a lot of thinking to do. Good night. <laughs>